When I was a kid, I wanted to be a marine biologist. There was just one problem. I was kind of afraid of the ocean. Today, I'm facing my fears at Oregon Coast Aquarium in Newport. We're gonna inspect some food, clean a habitat, and just maybe feed the sharks. Safely, of course. It's time to work. Oregonians are anything but ordinary. We're traveling the state to find the weird and wonderful jobs people do and how they stay safe doing them. I'm Corey Jenkins, and this is Oregon Odd Jobs. The Oregon Coast Aquarium has hundreds of aquatic animals on display. My day was going to be all about what goes on behind the scenes to take care of them. All right, here we are in the kitchen. I'm with Megan. Megan, what work takes place here? Hi, this is our kitchen that we share with mammals as well as the fish and the sharks. And every single morning, our mammalogists start the morning in here around seven o'clock. And we're gonna prep every single bucket that we need to feed out for the whole day for all of our seals, sea lions, and sea otters. Okay, let's, let's go to work. All right. Before the fish can be fed to the animals, they first need to be individually inspected. Okay, so we've got the fish here. What, what, what are we looking at? What are, what are we inspecting? I mean, this one looks pretty good. Yeah, so we uh, inspect everything according to USDA protocols for the fish in the morning. So we give it a, a full 360 look over uh, because if it was missing an eyeball or had any cuts or scrapes, it could harbor bacteria growth. And we wanna make sure our animals stay nice and healthy. So it's important that they get the best fish possible. With the fish inspected and approved, we headed out to entice the seals and sea lions to join us behind the scenes so that we could give their enclosure a good cleaning. The first step was to open the sea lion gate. Release the sea lions! <laughs> yeah! Oh, wow! <laughs> the sea lions were clearly ready for their morning snack, which allowed Megan to get their weight and do a daily health check, looking for any new cuts or scrapes they might need to be aware of. And then an over as well. Wow. Cool. With the all done signal, we went to get on our eye protection as a couple of curious pinnipeds looked on. Our next task, lowering the water gate, which created a watertight barrier between the pools, allowing the main exhibit to be drained for the deep cleaning ahead. So, while we waited for the pool to drain, we went ahead and gathered our cleaning supplies, including hoses and bleach water. With our cart fully loaded, we headed off to the exhibit where the water was just about gone. So we set up our gear and started hosing things down. The biggest thing is the fecal count. So we do water quality testing every week because according to uh, standards, it can't exceed a certain point, a certain amount. It's been based off of all the history we know, it's about three to four weeks where we need to do a full clean to make sure that that bacteria doesn't get too high. These animals, they poop a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot. They poop a lot. And it's not always solid. It's <laughs> also in the water, so it just kind of spreads around. Well, with that image firmly planted in my brain, it was my turn to start spraying. And spraying. And spraying some more. Once the water was fully drained, all the surfaces were then sprayed with a coat of bacteria-killing bleach water. So this is just a really important step for keeping our animals healthy. Uh, this will help with their eyes, for example. Water quality needs to be good for their eyes. We made sure to get all the places the seals and sea lions like to hang out, as that was where the majority of the feces and urine was. After we'd done all we could from above, it was time for Megan to put on her respirator and head down into the pit, where the heavy fumes lingered and took longer to dissipate. While some of the pinnipeds were waiting patiently, others were not. <coughs> so, we quickly rinsed down all the surfaces and started on the windows so the guests could clearly enjoy watching these beautiful animals. Once done, we climbed out, rinsed down the windows, and we were finally ready to refill the tank. The water itself is actual fresh seawater pumped in from the bay. And after a couple of hours, the pool was filled and the seals and sea lions were able to enjoy a pristine enclosure. And, I don't know about you, but it's always nice to know when your work is appreciated.
Now that we're all finished cleaning the pinniped habitat, let's take a look at Passages of the Deep, where they currently have divers in cleaning the tank. Let's go. Passages of the Deep is a multi-tank exhibit that allows you to literally walk through the different depths of the ocean and view the creatures that live there. And it all had to be cleaned. So hi Trish, hi. Corey. Nice to meet you, Corey. Good to meet you as well. Um, tell us what, what's going on in the tank right now. So right now we have two of our divers. A couple times a week we get in, we scrub the algae off the glass for the customers. This one over here is vacuuming up the poop that's in the gravel. They're always in line sight of each other. So if something's going wrong, if there's somebody that's having an issue, they can let each other know with hand signals and then they can go to the top. So tell us a little bit about the scuba gear and what you're looking out for safety-wise with scuba gear. One of the things that we check on a regular basis is we check our seals on the tanks, on the mouthpieces, on the gear itself. We also do like a pre-safety checklist when it comes to health. If any of the criteria is not met on the pre-dive checklist, then that diver doesn't dive for the day. Well, that all sounds good for a tank with fish that can't eat you. But for the other tank, there were a few extra precautions. So here in the open ocean tank, we've got two divers in there. Correct. One of them is using a vacuum to vacuum up the fecal matter from the animals. And what is the other doing? They've got this black and white striped pole. What's that about? Yeah, so we call that the stick. Or, the and, stick, or it's, a technical, it's, yeah, a yeah, it's a technical term, technical the stick. Term that we've made. They're in there basically making sure that the sharks see them and also making sure that the sharks don't get too close. So with our sharks, we're not worried about necessarily attacks by any means. However, you can never be too safe. So there's always, at least whenever anybody is in the tank, there's always at least one person sticking. Just simply, they'll put the stick out in front of them. If the shark comes near, just to show, hey, there's something here and it's black and white stripes so they can see a pattern. Yeah. And they see that and you can see their eye kind of click over to it and then they'll turn around and they'll swim further away. That makes sense. Yeah. When in doubt, use a stick. Exactly. If there's one thing I know about sharks, it's that they like to eat. And so do the other creatures that live in the passages of the deep. So it was time to head up above the pools to assist with feeding time. First up was the sturgeons. As I waved to the guests in the tunnel below, we put a black and white striped target in the water so the sturgeons knew where to go for their food. Um, so we feed the white sturgeons that are trained. We have a mix of smelt and herring that they get fed. They also get garlic, which changes the taste of their blood helping to fend off any parasites. One cool thing I learned about sturgeons is that they have what's called a protrusible mouth, which allows them to suck in their food. They don't really have teeth. So like even if you're hand feeding them like underwater, if they were to like get your fingers, it's just something just holding onto you and then they release it. It was finally my turn to try the weirdest type of fishing that I'd ever done. Yeah. Okay, that's really fun. <laughs> Before you knew it, I felt like I could add professional sturgeon feeder to my resume. But what about all the other hungry fish? Well, it was time for a broadcast feed, which basically started a free-for-all feeding frenzy with eels and fish of all shapes and sizes. All right, feeding sturgeon and fish are one thing, but sharks, eh, it's actually pretty similar. You just clip your fish to the end of the pole, stick it in the water, and wait. Now, while we're waiting, you may have wondered earlier whether or not the sharks eat the other fish in the enclosure with them. Well, the answer is no, and this is why. Why would you work and go out and exercise for your food if you don't have to? If you're gonna put it on my plate, I'm gonna eat it. And we feed them three times a week. Out in the wild, they might, they might only eat once a week. They might eat once a month. It all depends on the shark and the time of year. Which also might explain why they weren't going crazy for the food we stuck literally right under their noses. But then, every once in a while, you'd get a bite. Oh, come on, buddy! I fed a shark! <laughs> As the sharks were fed, the aquarium staff kept track of how much each type of shark was eating, from leopards to spinies to the big guys like Casper. And as the sharks finished up their free buffet and started to lose interest, 
we tossed the rest of the food out into the pool and called it a day. As our visit ended, it was clear from the smallest jellyfish to the biggest shark, the deep affection the aquarium staff have for the animals that live here. It doesn't matter the job or the kind of day, it could be the worst day in the world, and you come through and you look at your animals in the tanks and you think, all right, this is why I'm doing this. Well, that's an interesting day. It's incredible how much care and support goes into maintaining the health and well-being of these incredible animals. We'll see you next time on Oregon Odd Jobs.